Yeah. All right. First of all, I'd like to start off by saying hello, everybody. Hello. Uh, welcome to Long Island Debates annual veterans distribution ceremony. Normally, annually, we'll do a uh, dinner with a buffet and a, uh, awardment of all the uh, funds raised. Unfortunately, with these times, we aren't able to do that. So today, we're doing this in lieu of. And before we get started, I'd like to say the pledge. Good morning. I'm glad that a few of us could get together to do this because this is important to the organization. Uh, it's important that these veterans uh, agencies will continue to take care of what they take care of and do what they do because we know they're not getting it from anywhere else. So let's, you know, keep this promoted. Um, donate if you haven't in the future because we're doing this all the time. So we'll start this with a prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the sun to warm us up in this chilly morning, Father. We thank you for the opportunity to come together to honor those who are helping taking care of our veterans, Father, and the veterans that fight for the rights that we have, the freedoms that we have, Father. We need to take care of them, Father, and we know that sometimes they don't get enough from other places, so let's fill it in with this. Father, we thank you for everyone here. We pray that if they're going through anything, any situations of any kind, Father, just give them a sense of peace and let them know that you're involved. And Father, let them always have the heart to help veterans, help anyone that needs help, but to help our veterans as well. Father, we thank you for the chance to do this. We love you for all that you bless us with, and we thank you in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. All right. I'm going to invite Debbie up here to... Uh... Debbie. Good morning. Okay. I'd like to introduce a few people that are with us today. We have Tom Romaine, the Director of Veterans Affairs for Suffolk County. From the 8th Legislative District, Anthony Piccarelli. Plus, where? Where is she? Plus the one. From the 12th, we have Leslie Kennedy. And we have John Kennedy, our county controller. Where's John? He's coming back. Oh, okay. Okay, we have from the 15th district, Jason Richburg and Andrew. Okay, Assemblyman from the 2nd District, Anthony Palumbo. From the 3rd District, Joe DiStefano. And we have Hannah, who is representing Monica Martinez today. Did I miss anybody? Oh, yeah, you. <laughs> Sorry, Doug. Wow, that's bad. I know I am. <laughs> well, you know what? He's always late. <laughs> From the 5th District, our, and my assemblyman, Doug Smith. I am sorry, Doug. All right, at this time, I'd like to invite politicians one at a time to come up and say something if they wish. Okay. It is so good to be here, and thank you so much to everything that the Long Island Debate does. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you to the entire board. Um, I'm so proud to be a member of Long Island Debate. And, uh, you know, even though I'm not a writer, it's good that uh, we have a large community in this organization that promotes uh, safety, awareness, training, and education, and also advocates for important policies. Uh, for those who don't know, Long Island Bait does go above and beyond, and every time you hear one of these uh, horrific tragedies that happen on our roadways, these devastating left-hand turns that leave our motorcycle community 
uh, really uh, broken. Uh, they are there to defend and, and to, to make sure that justice is served. So that's something that's very important. They also go to Albany and Washington to advocate for new legislation uh, and provide training courses uh, to keep our roadways safe. Now, today is a very special event, and I wish we could have uh, been doing it the way that we've done every other year. But today we're recognizing over three quarters of a million dollars collected by these great uh, men and women for our veteran service organizations. And, you know, on behalf of our, absolutely, that's a, our veterans groups right now, just like many other nonprofit organizations, are hurting and are, are really uh, stressed under fiscal stress due to the uh, pandemic, this global pandemic we're facing. So for them to be able to deliver the services to veterans that they are able to do, uh, they need that, that kind of support. And the fact that Long Island Abate, despite that, was still able to raise over $160,000 just speaks volumes. So for that, I would like to just say thank you on behalf of our veterans. On behalf of the state of New York, I do have a citation uh, to, to give to Long Island Abate. So thank you, Chris. And uh, thank, you, thank you. And God bless all of you. Um, let's hope we get through this pandemic and can resume next year in our typical fashion. Thank you. Oh, picture. All right, next. We figured, although Doug is late all the time, he was he's profound. So Joe and I are going to combine our statements. Joe, I want to let you go first. We have a citation as well, um, but I just wanted to come in and, and, and reiterate the great work that you folks do, um, not only for our veterans, but for our communities. It's common sense legislation that you're always advocating for on the state and federal level. Um, and and you, you've, you've raised this money, obviously, during a very, very difficult time where people were struggling financially, yet we're still able to bring home the bacon um, for these organizations. So um, great work. Stay safe. And uh, certainly, please remember that our doors are always open. If you have any issues, we are certainly always supportive of you because you do wonderful work. Um, and please stay safe. Thank you. First of all, I want to re reiterate what Doug and uh, Tony have said. Um, you always have friends in Albany when it comes to veterans and veterans affairs and things of what you provide, uh, education and training for the motorcycle community. Without your help and without your uh, raising of this money, a lot of people would not have the services that they need. We always find ourselves uh, in Albany fighting for veterans. Uh, one in point is the Joseph T. Dwyer. Uh, every year they take it out of the budget and we have to beg, borrow and steal to get it to be put back in. But because of our advocacy and because of our tenacious way of doing things when it comes to those types of programs, the, the minority assembly members are always, always fighting for veterans and everything that you stand for. And I stand with you very proud to be part of this uh, today to show our support for what you do for the motorcycle community. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Go ahead, ladies first. Ladies first. I'm proud to be here today to stand alongside wonderful men and women who choose to assist their peers. That's something that's vitally important. I'm proud of you. I know you're proud of you. Um, we support you in any way possible, whatever you need. We're here. And I'm just going to ask a favor at 4.51 this morning. We lost a Vietnam veteran. that my husband and I had been helping take care of for about 18 years. Um, Daniel Pierce, a Native American, four-year Air Force um, during Vietnam. Uh, so if you could all say a prayer, that would be wonderful. Thank you. Well, good morning, and thank you, everyone. Thanks for having me here today, Suffolk County Legislator Anthony Piccarillo. And, uh, you know, I proudly serve on the Veterans Committee in Suffolk County, and it's organizations like Abate who go above and beyond the call of duty to raise money and uh, raise educational awareness for motorcycle safety, what you do for the veterans community. It just can't uh, go unsaid that without groups like you, we would be in a worse uh, place in Suffolk County. So from the bottom of my heart, I thank you for everything that you do, and I look forward to working aside uh, all of you uh, in the future. Thank you very much. Good morning. My name is uh, Legislator Jason Richburg. I'm here with my deputy legislative aide, Andrew. <laughs> he likes that title. 
<laughs> um, but as a son as a, of a Vietnam veteran, veteran, I think it's important that, that you all are, are doing God's work. Um, and yes, he's, he's going to reiterate my speech. Um, but what I'm saying, what I mean by that is, you know, you're giving beyond what, you, what your organization is supposed to do. Your organization is giving education to folks about motorcycle safety, and you said that's great, that's, that's what we can do 9 to 5, but we're going to do something else too. And raising money, especially in a pandemic, where you know, we can't gather together, but, you, but folks are able to get, spread, scrub their pennies and nickels and dimes for other people, especially, the, especially those who have fought for our country, is so vitally important. And as, you know, as, as I said, as a son of a veteran, you know, I, I want to thank you all for all the work that you're doing. You know, a lot of it is unseen, but it's important, and especially on the motorcycle safety, because we need to make sure that everyone is safe on the roads. So thank you very much. Good morning. I'll be very brief, I promise. Um, County Executive Ballone had expected to be here. He had intended to be here this morning. In fact, uh, we both had planned to be here together. Um, unfortunately, um, he had a, um, a family commitment, so uh, the coin was tossed, and um, you got good-looking, um, smart, smart had to be elsewhere. But uh, Steve does send his regards. Um, all of you know how, uh, how near to Steve's heart that you are. Um, the mission, the work that you do, the effect that you have on our larger community um, is, is really difficult to, to uh, express in a few short words. Uh, I know most of you, most of you know me, and that, that's over a period of many, many years. And I will tell you that um, we deal with a lot of organizations. We work with many, many very fine people in the, uh, in the community, uh, some really um, nobly um, guided um, organizations. Abate is one of the very, very few, I promise you, um, one of the very few organizations that I belong to personally, because I, I sincerely believe in the mission. And um, maybe just take that a step further. Um, from the chair that I sit in, I, I, I have an opportunity throughout the course of the year to see directly the effect that these, that these donations, that this financial support has on the community. And I'm gonna drill down into the weeds just a little bit. And I, I do this only because I think it's extremely important. Um, you know, we've heard, we've heard reference made to the pandemic. We've heard reference made to uh, the challenges in the community and the, um, the service that our veterans have provided. One of the things that uh, we don't often speak of, in fact, we don't speak of it often enough, but it's a, it's a real problem in our community. It's very much um, uh, a current ongoing issue, uh, and that is suicide amongst veterans. And we're working very, very hard. I will tell you that Suffolk County on several levels is a leader both at the state level and at the national level in terms of some of the work that we're doing with regard to sui veter suicidality amongst service members, veterans, and their families. Uh, we lost a veteran to suicide here in Suffolk County again just this week. We lost a veteran on Sunday, j just passed. Um, and I will tell you that while we're here talking about abate and the mission and the rider safety and the advocacy and the um, the day-to-day the -day work that you do in the community, I'm here to tell you that with the donations that you provide to many of these organizations, they in turn are able to reach further into the community and access folks that some, maybe I can't access directly or some of you can't access directly. I will tell you that in this pile of money right here, lives will be saved. This isn't about buying paint for an organization's building. This isn't about putting new wheels on the truck. This is about saving lives, and you guys are doing that. You guys and ladies are doing that. And I, I, I just I don't know that there is a more noble calling than to serve our fellow man. And when you, when you can go home at night and put your head on the pillow tonight and know with absolute certainty that there are veterans whose funerals we did not have to attend because of what you do, because of the work that you do in our community, um, I am I'm forever in your debt for that. And on behalf of all of the veterans in Suffolk County and on behalf of our 1.5 million residents, thank you so much. Keep, I look forward to doing this with you guys over and over and over again. And uh, I just want to give a quick shout out. Um, behind us over here in the Navy cap is one of my staff, uh, County Veteran Service Officer Brian Rooney, um, who is also just doing extraordinary work and making a difference. Thank you all. Thank you. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. I'll keep it quick just to reiterate what everyone said. Thank you so much for having us. Um, on behalf of Senator Martinez, she is on the committee for, committee for veterans, and we are so supportive of all of our veterans, and not only our veterans, but the veteran services organizations who do 
the hard work every single day. Um, I was just talking to Brian about a veteran we were, we were helping this past week. So again, on behalf of Senator Martinez, thank you all. We're happy to be here and everyone stay safe. Thank you. With that, I'd like to turn it over to Bill Quinn, the chairman of this organ. Thank, thank you, everyone, uh, for coming out today. Um, we're going to try to get this, get through this as uh, soon as we can. Um, you know, the pandemic, as everybody has mentioned, has really crimped everything going on. I mean, a lot of the organizations uh, couldn't have their functions. You know, even when you think about it, you know, Memorial Day had to be squashed. They're going to squash Veterans Day out in Calverton only because they can't have groups together. Um, you know, we have uh, this pile is 49 checks going out to 49 different groups. And, you know, there's a, a complete list that we could read and we could go over the checks and amounts um, that may take quite a bit of time and and uh, we're going to mention a lot of the groups but one of the things that that uh, came to our mind was you know there are a lot of people that never could become veterans the reason they couldn't because they made the ultimate sacrifice they, they made the final measure they gave their life for us they, they gave their lives in, in the line of duty and uh there's a list, and it may not be all inclusive, but there's a list, and I've got, I've got 56 on the list. And I said, well, I could read 49 organizations, or I could read off 56 people from Suffolk and Nassau County. You know, we don't have the people from Brooklyn and Queens, because you can't tell them they're actually on Long Island. They, they won't believe you. But, but this is just Suffolk and Nassau County. And I, uh, I've got my nephew. John Latrusto, he's with the Huntington Fire Department, and he's going to assist me as we read. And if I could ask you to please turn your cell phones off, um, you know, we just want to mention these names, and uh, I promise you it'll be three or four minutes. And, and before we start, the uh, the first was uh, was in, in in 2002, and the last was in 2019. So that's for 17 years. Long Island is, is spilling blood in the war on terrorism in, in Iraq and Afghanistan. And I'm going from the, from the latest down. Robert, Robert Hendricks, Marines, Locust Valley. Dashan Briggs, Air Guard, Port Jeff Station. Andres O'Keefe, Air Guard, Senator Riches. Christopher Raguso, Air Guard, Comac. I'd like to mention they're all from the 106 out east. Louis Bonacasa, Air Guard, Quorum. Kevin LaPerry, Army, Baldwin. Greg Buckley, Jr., Marines, Oceanside. Tara Jacobs Brown, Air Force, Hempstead. Frank Edmansky III, Army, East Patchog. Anthony Ventez, Jr., Army, Wading River. Joseph Feinhardt, Army, Sag Harbor. Jason Santora, Army, Farmingville. Justin Wilson, Marines, Comac. Keith Bishop, Army, Medford. Leopold Damas, Marines, Floral Park. James Argentine, Marines, Farmingdale. Juan Baladosing, Army, Hempstead. Jonathan Keller, Army, Wading River. Andre Mitchell, Army, Elmont. Anthony Mangano, Army, Greenlawn. Jordan Herder, Marine, Sag Harbor. Zachary McBride, Army, New Hyde Park. Pablo Basificor, Army, Shirley. Christopher Shear, Marines, East Northport. Matthew Bayless, Army, Oakdale. James Luden, Army, Bellport. Daniel Fuentes, Army, Levittown. James Regan, Army, Manhasset. Justin Garcia, Army, Elmhurst. Julian Archea, Marines, Baldwin. Michael Glover, Marines, Garden City. John Engerman, Army, East Northport. Michael Lacalzi, Marines, Garden City. 
Scott Bandhold, Army, North Merrick. Thomas Wilhurt, Army, Mastic. Lance Sage, Army, Lakeview. Robert Pope II, Army, East Islip. Jared Kareem, Marines, Harpog. Jose Ruiz, Army, Brentwood. James McNaughton, Army, Center Reach. Michael Murphy, Navy, Patchogue. Jeffrey Weiner, Navy, Valley Stream. Robert DeFazio, Army, West Babylon. Wilfredo Urbana, Army, Baldwin. Matthew Lynch, Marines, Jericho. James Petaway, Jr., Army, Southampton. Ramon Mato, Marines, Brentwood. Ronald Winchester, Marines, Rockville Center. Gregory Wall, Army, Valley Stream. Nathan Buckendall, Coast Guard, Stony Brook. Kevin Cole, Marines, Hicksville. Michael Esposito, Jr., Army, Brentwood. Jacob Fletcher, Army, Bayshore. Raheen Heider, Army, Bayshore. Michael Maltese, Air Force, Wheatley Heights. And Scott Dramosa, Marines, Quorum. Greater love has no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. And just, uh, just like to say a quick prayer for these, uh, these, these warriors of ours. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leads me to green pastures to lie down by clear water. He restores my soul. I walk through the valley of death and darkness. I fear no evil, for you are by my side every step of the way with your rod and your staff to watch over, comfort, protect, love, and follow me all the days of my life. You prepare a feast for me amongst my enemies. My cup runneth over. Surely joy and happiness will be with me for the rest of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Eternal rest grant unto our warriors, O Lord, and let perpetual life shine upon them. May they rest in peace. May their souls and all the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Thank you very much. And I, and I want to thank uh, John for the wonderful job he did helping us out with the, with the, uh, the belly. He actually stole us off the chief's desk in Huntington. So they're having a meeting this afternoon. We're going to have to get that back. So we're going to move this right along now. You know, it, it, you know, a bait, a bait is, uh, as everybody mentioned, we're pretty much founded on motorcycle rights. And, you know, you, you won't have any right in the world unless you're willing to back it up. And, uh, you know, you could have the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, everything under the sun you can write. But until you put something behind it, you're, uh, you know, nobody's going to even listen to you. And, uh, you know, we have our, our leaders here with us. And, uh, you know, through the, through the line, they, uh, they ultimately uh, will, will uh, send our people in harm's way. We depend, depend on their judgment. We, the people, put them in office to do that. So uh, when our, our, our people come back, our veterans, they, you know, it's not only wounds of the, of the flesh, it's wounds of the spirit. And uh, we have the obligation, we have the responsibility to help with that. And, uh, you know, so uh, with that being said, um, the first batch, I want to get Gary Hart. He's our volunteer coordinator. Gary, to come on up. Before we get started, what, what happened? What do you want? Before we get started, John Kennedy. John Kennedy, do you want to, we have to stop. John Kennedy just arrived. Please, John Kennedy, if you'd like to come up. <clears throat> Good morning, everybody, and I, I'll, I'll make it quick. Um, listening to that list of names today, I, I thought to myself, each and every one of these individuals joined up and agreed to go ahead and protect what we're doing here today. Being able to come together peaceably and recognize their commitments and their acknowledgments. Uh, my wife and I had a good friend pass at 4.50 this morning. Uh, he is a, he was a um, Air Force veteran, Danny Pierce. Served from 61 to 65. He went in at 17 years old. Native American, he served all over Europe. He came back, bounced around, 
used his GI Bill, and he became a nurse practitioner. He did 15 years at Rikers Island as primary medical care. So I, I, I guess the takeaway from this is, and we all know this, that what a veteran has done for us and has done throughout the whole duration of our country is make us a better place and the place that we are now. And each one of these electeds here, as, long, as well as me, gives the commitment to each one of you in a bait and anybody else that we will do anything for a veteran. I've hired a veteran. I've assisted veterans with benefits. We've done whatever we can to keep veterans housed, keep oil in a tank. And it's these types of partnerships that actually is where the rubber hits the road, no pun intended. You know, talk is cheap. But when it gets down to actually delivering and making a difference in a man or woman's life, thank goodness we have organizations like Abate. You guys can cut through the red tape. We find the need, we reach out to you, we work in a partnership, and you make a difference in somebody's life. So thank you. We'll continue to support you, and thank you for being here. All right, thank you very much. Uh, so I'd, I'd like to uh, call up Gary Hart. He's our volunteer coordinator. Gary, he's got a, these are a number that he's gonna make sure get delivered. Um, I, one I'd like to mention is the uh, Patriot Guard riders. They're, they're very involved. They're, most of them are motorcyclists. You don't have to be a mo motorcyclist to be a Patriot Guard rider. They do the welcome homes. They, they're there for funerals and anything that uh, veterans need. And. Uh, uh, you know, it, there are also a number of other groups. You have VFWs on this list, Long Beach, Sayville, Lindenhurst, Farming. You know, we've got the Sea Cadets, um, Project Nine Line, the Marine Corps League, Pause of War, uh, Blue Star Bombs, FDNY Ride 343, Coalition of Veterans Organizations, and uh, some of the Legion Riders. And Gary's going to see that these get delivered. Um, if you have to mail them, we're not paying for the postage. <laughs> I got it. It's, it's so appreciate it, Gary, for taking care of that All for right, us. No problem. Thank you. Next, uh, very special, you know, guest of ours is Joe Bart. He's uh, he's very involved with the USA Patriots. Uh, and Joe, if you'd like to say a little bit about them, they're uh, they're a wonderful organization. Thank you very much. Uh, the U.S. Patriots, you might know as the Wounded Warrior Amputee Softball Team. And what they do is they travel the nation, they show the resiliency they got from the military. Uh, their motto is no quit, no limits, push on. Long Island happens to be one of the favorite place and the place they played the most in the whole country. And we hope to have them back this July uh, 2021 for free games. And of course, we want everybody there to, you know, cheer them on, have some fun, and a few, believe it or not, Smiles. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. You know, the next uh, next next group of uh, checks that we're gonna have handed out would be Nick Lamorte, our vice president, has said that he would uh, take care of this for us. And one of them I want to mention on here is, uh, with our esteemed guests, is the Veterans for a More Responsive Government. So if you get a call from them, you know that they were partially funded by Long Island Debate. Thank you, Bill. Yeah, okay. Thank right you for right your work. Right. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Then the next group of checks, we have the AMVETS, uh, post 1174, the Ladies Auxiliary, American Legion Ride is Sayville. Um, Angel Bikes, Support Committee Calverton, VFW Patchogue, VFW Post Port Jeff, VFW Post Rocky Point. And one I want to mention on this is the Meals of Honor. This was done by Karen Wirth. She was the spearhead on this. Now, Karen Wirth and her husband Ken, very involved with the Patriot Guard riders, very involved with the bait. You could count on them. They do the most mundane clean up after tasks, clean up after any of our events, they were always there. Unfortunately, Ken passed away suddenly in April, and uh, Karen is going through a battle now. She's battling, and she, uh, she's in hospice, 
A week or so ago, we were able to drive by and, and, and say hello to her and a, a group of motorcyclists, um, say goodbye to Karen. And, uh, but she did the meals of honor. What she did is she would cook home, home cooked meals for veterans and they, she would get them delivered. And uh, you know, this was something dear to her heart. So if I could get Debbie Stundell to come on up here and you want to say anything about any of the groups or? Every single one of the groups, every single one of these groups, um, I know like the Legion Riders, for the holidays, they'll supply meals for Thanksgiving and Christmas to veterans in need. Um, AMVETS Ladies Auxiliary 1174, they make gift bags for our homeless veterans. Unfortunately, every year, the number of our homeless veterans go up, which is a disgrace. Um, last year, we did 120 bags. Okay, but every single one of these checks makes a difference in our veterans' life. So I will continue fighting, you know, to raise money for Long Island Abate, you know, because I'm part of it, but I'm also a recipient. So thank you. Now, uh, one of the next uh, group of checks, I'm going to have Mark Wolf come up. Uh, he is very vac active on our Veterans Committee, and uh, he's got his uh, finger on the pulse of what's going on with the Veterans Organization, so we consider Mark an extremely valuable member on the Veterans Committee. And uh, he's got the, uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about, he was very, very instrumental in getting us a substantial grant from a, a club that for uh, whatever reasons be, that we don't want to go into, they had to close down and they needed to do something with their treasury. And, and Mark said, suggested the Long Island Bay Veterans Pro, which is one of the things that saved us this year. Because you got to remember, we did not have, we did not have uh, our full veterans run. We have not had meetings. So the contributions to, to us have, have cut back. And uh, one of the uh, groups that uh, Mark is going to hand deliver for us is to the Specialist Matthew Bayless Memorial Fund. Um, Matthew's father, Richard, a Vietnam veteran, you know, in, instead of being consumed by grief, he's, he, he's out there, you know, trying to help veterans and their families. And he, and he uh, wrote a, a beta letter. It's a short letter. And I'd just like to share it with you. Dear Abate, what a year, especially with the COVID virus hitting us between the eyes as it has. We had several fundraisers for Matt's Fund planned for this spring and summer, but had to cancel them due to the COVID. That's why I'm thankful that Abate is again considering a grant to Matt's Memorial Fund in 2020. So far, we gave out six scholarships to children and grandchildren of veterans from Long Island. The recipients, James Anderson, Sophia Bonifuco, Gina Messina, and Philip Monsada are all, all sent me wonderful essays with their applications of how, vet, how a veteran influenced their lives. Robert Cerrone told a story about his dad, a USA, a US Air Force pilot who introduced, to an, introduced him to an older veteran that gave him advice that he would never forget. Tantana McGarity, daughter of Daniel Fuentes, and he's, he's on our list of, uh, of veterans that gave it all. Um, told me a story about her dad when she last saw him as a little girl two months before he was killed in action on April 6, 2007 in Baghdad, Iraq. Daniel is also a student of my sister-in-law at Island Trees High School in Levittown. Daniel was killed only six weeks before my son Matt was killed and only about a mile apart. Strange world. Uh, so this is, this is actually helping the, this, he's got a scholarship going that's helping the children of veterans. So uh, I know Mark is going to make sure all of these get delivered. And, uh, you know, I, and I appreciate, Mark, everything that you do for Thank us. You. Thank you very much. Thank you. I got a very, another special member of our Veterans Committee, Mike Ossip. If Mike could come on up.
I gotta tell you, Mike, Mike is, uh, he's one of these behind the scenes guys. You know, he's the kind of guy that gets the job done. He, he's not the kind of guy that's gonna advise you on how to do something. He's gonna get right in there. Um, Mike, Mike is a Vietnam era uh, army veteran. And I think what happens with those guys is that because they didn't go to Vietnam, they might be a little bit of guilt, right? But he was in Germany you know, waiting for the Soviets to come back in. So, you know, he, uh, they, had, they had Mike over there. And the other thing that Mike did is he was very involved with the Polish Hall for many, many years. And uh, what they would do is he would organize a, a, a steak dinner. They'd have a 50-50 and they'd have a, a, a raffle. And every year they raised three or four thousand dollars. And he, they gave that money to Long Island Debate. And we have sponsors that match it. And they gave us so much, we looked back at the accumulation that it was enough to buy a $34,000 12-passenger DAV van that goes out all over Long Island bringing our veterans up to Northport for whatever medical services they need. One of the other special groups that, that Mike's going to make sure that they, uh, they get the funds is uh, Joanne Lyles and Jordan Zahner. Jordan is on this list. Um, we, we, turn our, we turned our run when Jordan was killed in Iraq in 2010. We said, we have to honor this Marine. And we decided to go over the Sag Harbor Bridge. They named it the Jordan Herder Veterans Memorial Bridge. So every year, we've been going on that bridge. And Jordan's mom is out there with her flag and, and her friends and the people of Sag Harbor, you know, cheering us on as we go over for our veterans run. And she has a, uh, she has a scholarship that she uh, put together and, she cert and it goes to uh, st students graduating from Sag Harbor that want to go into the military or into law enforcement. And it's very special. Her son, Jordan, was 19 years old. He was uh, taking over a, a position for another Marine they had met each other for about two, two or three minutes, and a, and a truck filled with high explosives came careening around the barricade. These two Marines stood there. Everybody else bailed. It's on video. It's on video. You see in the, the, the other, the Iraqis bail, and, and these two Marines stood there. They held their position. They, they had concentrated fire on the vehicle. The vehicle blew up and took them both out. And uh, you say to yourself, and they saved well over 100 people had that vehicle got past them and got into this compound, over 100 would have died, Marines and Iraqi police that were being trained by the Marines. And you say to yourself, well, geez, shouldn't he, shouldn't he have been awarded the Medal of Honor? No, he got the Navy Cross, which is the second highest. He wasn't awarded the Medal of Honor because that's what they expect a 19-year-old to do. They expect him to stand there hold his position and give it all up for us. He can't go to the 7-Eleven and buy a pack of cigarettes. He can't go to the 7-Eleven and buy a six pack of beer, but my God, we can send him to hell and tell him to stand there, do your duty. And that's, uh, that's what Jordan did and, and, and all the others that are, that are on this list. And I, uh, and I, know, I know Mike's gonna make sure this gets out there. And, uh, and Mike, we appreciate everything that you did and well, thank taking you. charge of this. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. God bless you. Now I have to, uh, otherwise I'm probably going to get thrown out of a bait if I don't uh, pick our, our leader, Big Chris, to come on down because we, uh, we have some uh, putting him in charge of these. But we're not giving him a lot to be in charge of, but we're, we're putting him in charge. And two of them I want to mention, the VA Medical Center at Northport, what they do is uh, they actually have this, it's like a script, a monopoly money. So if a veteran's up there and he doesn't have money for lunch, they give him some script. He can go down and get something to eat. If he needs a pair of uh, sneakers, he can go to the commissary there. They help out with this money. So this, uh, this gets down to the grassroots, you know, and it goes dollar for dollar. There's no overhead. There's nothing. So that's a wonderful. And the other one that we're doing is the... Uh, Vietnam Veterans of America, Chapter 11. They're a, they're a wonderful, I think the reason that the veterans are so respected now is because the Vietnam veterans, when they came back, 
they they were they were chastised. There was there was no you know there was no honor to them. The, the military was blamed for everything in Vietnam. They did what they were supposed to do. You know, some of them were told, "Don't read your uni- wear your uniform. Don't you know?" And some of them got spit on coming back. But these were people that did what we asked them to do. So I think that that generation and their children's generations coming back from they're taking care of them. They're making sure. Listen. We're not going to let this happen again. We're going to keep our, our veterans safe and in, in, in the honor of the people of the United States. So uh, that's another great organization. They'll, if they find out a veteran is, uh, is hungry, they'll get him food. If he needs oil in his tank, they'll fill the tank up. They have a, uh, a program where they help veterans that have stumbled through the legal system. They'll help to bring them along. It's a, just a wonderful group. They got, you got Rich Kitson. Clarence Simpson, Tony Riona, they all do such wonderful work for our veterans. So I know Chris is going to make sure uh, we get this delivered. Thank you, sir. And I appreciate it. Thank you so much. <coughs> There's also one other on there, the Phoenix House. Oh, the, oh yeah. I forgot to mention the the, the, uh, the Phoenix House. This is, uh, they have a veterans wing and we're supporting that because what, what happened is this year, the reason we were able to uh, to raise these, raise these funds is that... Uh, one of our members, his son passed suddenly, and what they had done is they had made a substantial contribution to Long Island debate, and with the matching, that's how we got to the $160,000. So, and, that, and these are the, uh, it's Jonathan Bonifuto was a young man that died suddenly, and you, you'll see on our, uh, our signs, you know, left turns and kill, that these were, some of the funds we use for that, but a, a substantial portion we use for the veteran. We checked everything out with the family. We didn't, we wanted to make sure they were good with it. So that kind of saved our, our, our event this year. And so with that, I'm gonna get Crystal to make sure all of that Thank gets you, delivered. Sir. Thank you. Dude. But we always save the best for last. So I'd like to call up a Vietnam veteran. I'd like to call up the real deal. I'd like to call up Bill Stewart from Hog. Bill Bill Stewart. Bill Stewart is the uh, veterans liaison officer for Hog, and uh, you know we did, he would their group. We were going to have the veterans from Hog, the Holly's owners group. We were going to have them be our honored veterans this year, and of course the COVID hit and everything went to hell. And what what we didn't realize is that for, for years and years, Bill has been support, helping veterans on his own. He's been going out, like he, he, he'll get things like at the, the Home Depot. You know, can you imagine, you imagine Bill comes up to you and he says, listen, I'd like you to give me something. And he don't leave until you give him something. <laughs> it's like, you've got a pit bull in aisle five. Get a refrigerator out here real quick. So that's Bill, he does all that. He was on the tip of the spear in Vietnam. He's a combat veteran. He's been under fire. He's the real deal. A lot of the veterans, they're on the, on the end of the spear. They're pushing. He was on the tip, and he's here, and we're so lucky he's here, and we're lucky he's still serving today. So thank you, Bill. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for this. And, that's, and, that's, and, that's, and again, he does so much very, for Hog, and, and you know, I can't nice. say much about Bill. If we get to have our run next year, Bill and his boys, boys and girls, are going to be right up there in front. Yep, yep. Okay, okay. All right, Bill, thank you very much. Thank you Appreciate very much. That. Thank you. Appreciate it. Perfect. Chris, thank you. Thank you. So, I, I, you know, that's pretty much it on my end. I just want to say that, you know, they, it had been mentioned that what we've raised. I think we're like, we're like around $900,000 now. And uh, if we get any kind of a turnout next year, if the COVID goes away and we can get everybody back in the saddle, I think if we're here next year, wherever the hell we are, we're gonna be, we're gonna have, we'll have given away a million dollars. A million dollars, we're going for a million dollars. So uh, I don't know, Chris, you have anything else you wanna add? No. I just wanna say thank you to everybody that's here today. I wanna thank the board members. I wanna thank Ron, the photographer, as well as all the politicians that showed up. And also wanna thank all our members for making this happen. And God bless. <laughs> How are we doing? Uh, my name is Chris Beckins, B-E-C-K-H-A-N-S, with Long Island Abate. 
Uh, we're here today for a veteran ceremony for dispersing our fundraising funds that were accumulated throughout the year. And I'd like to give Bill Quinn the mic to give us a little heads up as to what we've done. My name is Bill Quinn, Q-U-I-N-N. -N, and uh, today we distributed $160,000 to uh, 49 veterans organizations here on Long Island. And uh, to date, this will probably bring us up in the last 10 years or so to over $900,000 that Long Island debate has raised to uh, veterans organizations here on Long Island. Well, we're hoping to get through the pandemic and next year we're hoping that at this time we'll be able to report that we've given over a million dollars. Thank you.